friends. Today we're actually going to do an underpainting. And I've chosen a photo that I took a couple years ago. This was uh, from uh, Massachusetts. And it's uh, near the water, uh, near the Slocum River, actually, uh, in Dartmouth. This is a, a band of rocks with some sand behind it, water below, water above, and a nice little seagull on it. Okay, it's a very quiet scene, but actually there's a lot of uh, kind of busyness going on down in here. A lot of stuff going on. This is very quiet back here, and then you have this little seagull sitting there. So I kind of like this picture. I've never painted it because the original picture uh, that I had was very dark, gray, green, black. Those were the colors. And so I decided to lighten a little bit on my computer, and that looked better. And then I printed it out. And I forgot, I have a brand new Epson printer. I forgot that when I print photos out, they print even lighter. But actually, I really love what happened. Because I'm seeing now in the rocks, instead of the dark gray and black that was there before, I'm seeing beautiful violets and greens, and even some magentas and purples in the water. So this is a much more exciting picture to me now. So I'll be keeping all of this in mind. Okay, so we're going to do an underpainting. We're going to first think about the colors of the, uh, the, the well, let's, let's, last time uh, I came up with a new way of thinking about challenges and possibilities, okay? So let's, let's look at that first. What are the challenging areas to paint? What are the easier areas to paint? Well, the easier area is obviously going to be this background. It's very abstract. There's not a lot going on in it, okay? The rocks are moderately challenging because there's a number of them. They have different values to them and they have to have, you know, some flow. The, the more difficult part is going to be this area down in here. So when I think about what colors to use, I want to keep that in mind. Now, a second consideration, and this is how I've normally chosen colors for an underpainting, is the actual color palette of the painting. And you can see that green is the predominant color here. There's green in the background, there's green in the rocks, there's green below. So green is the predominant color. The second color is violet uh, that I can really see now in this photo. I see violets back here. I see a lot of violets in the rocks. And so violet is the second color. Well, there's a third color. There, this is seaweed. This is going to be kind of a little more of a rusty orange. And I'm seeing, you know, the possibility of some very light, ochre orangey colors in the tops of the rocks and there. So we have basically a triad of green, violet, orange, which is the standard um, uh, landscape, standard landscape um, triad. So that's another consideration. Uh, so I'm going to be thinking about both of those things as I do this underpainting. And I'm going to be using hard pastels, and I'm going to be painting and talking to you about my color choices at the same time. So, we've already said this top part is, is one of the uh, easier parts. So I've, I've got a very light sketch here. I'm actually going to use this violet to get in the areas where I see the darker pieces in here. Rather than going to green, I'm going to go to this warm brown color, almost a reddish, it's really kind of a reddish brown. So I think this is going to give me a nice rich background. But this, this area is darker than the water below it, okay? But we still need to have some violet down in here. I'm going to use a slightly different reddish violet. Before I go any further, I'm going to take this light violet and I'm going to put uh, him on my bird so I do not lose him completely in my underpainting. I redrew this bird many times for some reason. 
I couldn't quite get him the way I liked him. So I'm just going to cover him up with violet. He's going to be white, but we don't want to start with white. So there's, there's the bird. Okay, so for the water, uh, I'm going to put a little of this brown in that was above. But then I'm going to go to something a little brighter and more interesting. A little more excitement to it. This is a little reddish orange. Now I'm going to be careful around this bird. I like to use the side when I'm doing this, but you know, there are places where you want to just use the end and. Um, You don't lose your drawing completely. So you bring this orange down. But I've got this area of brighter uh, green here. And I'm going to use a much lighter orange for that. That'll go really nicely under the warm greens. Okay, so that was the easy part, right? Now we have these rocks. We have some sand here. And the main thing with the rocks is not to lose the light. And I thought about using a turquoise. I thought about using various colors. It really doesn't matter as long as it's light enough. I had decided to go with this Karandash. They, they have a lovely series of olive green or olive brown, and I'm using those a lot. And so I'm going to put those, it's, it's going to be dark, darker than where I'll go eventually, but it hopefully will show up well enough in the uh, rock. So I'm just going to, to begin here by identifying all the light areas, all the sunlit sides of the rocks. And I'm going to put that in. And you can hear this is a very scratchy pastel. These are very hard. They're the hardest of the hard pastels. But they have some really beautiful colors, and that's why I love them. So uh, when I, I, I try to get as many color possibilities for underpaintings as possible. So I, so I have about four different brands of uh, hard pastels. So I'm always looking for the light areas here. And there. And I might, before I go to the brown, I might use this dark green just to get some of the dark crevices in, okay? Just so I can establish where the really darks are, rather than going to the purple that I'm going to use eventually, I'll use this dark green. So I'm still kind of sticking to my color palette uh, to some extent. So where I'm seeing some real darks. The thing I have to be careful about is that these really dark colors can just wipe out everything else that's in there. So I don't really want to start with too much of this. It'll, it'll wipe everything out, and that's all we'll see in the underpainting. So now I'm going to go to this brown, which is kind of a mid-value brown. It's a nice, nice brown. And since I'm going to go with, you know, violets and, and uh, greens on top, the brown underneath is just perfect for that. It's, think of it as a dark orange. Remember that orange and yellow, when they get dark, are you know it, usually in the brown family okay, somewhere. And I'm hoping that this value is close to, it's different enough. I'm going to put a little more light on here, and I'll be able to see this after the underpainting. Now, I could be using multiple colors. Um, what, what this is going to do is going to, I'm going to lose my drawing. I'm just going to have big shapes. I'm going to have big shapes of dark and light. 
that's what I'm going to end up with. Uh, maybe putting a little of that green in there will help to define some of it, but I'm going to lose a lot of that when I put the pastel on, uh, the alcohol. So we may have to redraw a little bit, but it'll still be worthwhile. here and this is one of the most complicated areas because you have some darkness uh, from the reflection of the rocks coming down you also have seaweed floating on the water and that's picking up some light but we need to think about what's underneath that so you know I'm, I'm going to put a little of the dark green down I'm going to what I really want here is basically a kind of rich the darker area and there's actually there are rocks in this water as well. I'm going to give them a slightly different color just so I can see them. And I omitted this one over here. Okay. Uh, so we've got some green. I don't want to do too much of that. I'm going to put some other colors in here. I'm going to put some magenta in. If I'm seeing that in the photo, and it's kind of going to perk things up a little bit. Okay, maybe a few violets. I want this to be just an interesting area of color. It's going to blend. And um, then we might get a little bit of brown in here. But for the most of it, what I'm going to go to is I'm going back to this nice uh, olive. I, I think this is going to work because it's, it's in between green and brown. So it's got the green in it, but it's also got the brown. This one, you know, kind of uh, tie it into the rest of the picture. And I might put a little of it in there. I might put some of the darker brown in up here. I just want this to be a nice mishmash of color. That's what I want. I want a mishmash of color up here. All right. And maybe just so things that get tied in, maybe I'm just going to bring a hint of that red down too. All right. So here we have it. It didn't take too long. As I mentioned in the last video, you know, doing an underpainting is a way of quickly getting color onto your, uh, your board. So let's um, take a break and I'll be back with a discussion of solvents. So now we're going to discuss the materials that we use in order to create the underpainting, in order to actually liquefy the hard pastel and push it into the surface so that we can paint on over it without it mixing with the uh, above colors. The first thing are brushes. Okay, I use these uh, flat top brushes from Simply Simmons. These are crystal, uh, acrylic bristle brushes. These are relatively inexpensive. I get them at my local art store and I have them in several uh, sizes. So this one is going to be really nice for up here down here. This one will be better for the rocks, the bird, the smaller areas. So I'll be using those brushes. That's the easy part. Okay, now solvents. We're going to have, uh, there's three options for solvents. And the first one is the one that I use typically, which is 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol from CVS, Walgreens, or your local drugstore, whatever. Um, this has the advantage of being cheap, dries quickly, and you can dump it down the sink afterwards. 
The disadvantage is that in this time of COVID-19, people are buying this to make hand sanitizer, so it may be difficult to find it, okay? So a second option, particularly if you're an oil painter, if you've got terpenoid or gamsol, uh, you can use that. Uh, you can use, uh, you can, might go to the hardware store and get denatured alcohol. That's another option. There are various possibilities there. These actually sometimes more nicely uh, melt the uh, pastel. You can kind of play with it, it doesn't dry immediately, so you have more time to play with it and work it around and really paint, paint it in a way. Um, so that's an advantage. The disadvantages are that it doesn't dry very quickly and that you can't dump it down the sink, the gamsol and the terpenoid. Your third choice is water. Okay, water. Well, water isn't the greatest. I find that it doesn't uh, as nicely melt the pastel. It's not as equal. And but if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. Okay. But the main thing you want to always remember. This is a reminder. Be sure that you have a surface that can handle alcohol. You are can do that. Pastel Premier cannot. Okay. And if you've got white Pastel Premier. Uh, if you use water on it, it's going to buckle. And so you really want to have it mounted or taped down well or something. So you want to think about your surface when you're doing an underpainting. That's just a reminder. Okay. So, so those are the materials, solvent and brushes. Now, there are different ways in which to apply the alcohol. You can be really careful. You could actually put your board down flat so that no dripping happens and you can get it, you know, really nicely done. I have done that. Uh, don't, don't normally. You can do it loosely and let it drip. And sometimes I take the brush and go right from top to bottom. And that's what I've been doing recently, but I think I'm not going to do that in this one. I think I'm going to go with the areas. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the bird. I'm going to try and establish this bird so as to not lose him. Okay? So there's my bird. All right, so. But for this, what I'm going to, I'm going to just start and go, I think I'll just go right down to the sandy part. I'll just start here, up down. You see, you can still see where the different colors are. So that's what we'll do. This is one way of doing it. You don't have to do it all within a color, a uh, particular color. You can just work from top to bottom, however it works for you. Just make sure, you know, it's dripping a little bit. Yeah. It's a nice, rich brown and violet up here. Uh, and then this warmer color is coming through. But that's going to be really nice to put the greens on over, I think. And I'll have to be careful as I get down here. It doesn't really matter. I just don't want to lose my bird. You know, I can reestablish the rocks. Now, when I get down to this bird, I may want to switch. I'm going to switch brushes. So that I can just get around him nicely and not lose him. See that I have enough pastel down that I'm getting a really nice uh, solid color here. I've lost a little up here. I can go back, add some of this in here. I can still see where it's some, of, some of that light orange was. Now, for the rocks, I'm going to go to my smaller brush and I'm going to do the light areas first. This is the same, this is just the sand in the background. So these rocks, I'm probably going to have to go back and, and just draw in the edges of them because I'm going to lose that. But 
They'll have a nice uh, basis for the color. So this is where we get into abstraction. When you put these colors on like this, it becomes one big abstract shape. I'm not seeing rocks anymore. I'm seeing abstract shapes. And that can be kind of fun to work with. I have to be a little more careful in this part. And when I get down to the next, I'm going to keep going. Okay, now we'll go back to the bigger brush. And we're going to use a sideways here because I don't want this dark to go all the way down. I see that it's dripping, but that's all right. People really love to do underpaintings because they say it's the only time a pastel artist gets to use a brush. And that's true. And sometimes you can really almost paint your underpainting with like a dry brush technique and kind of you know, fill things in. So, we're almost done with this. And I can tell you that the top is already dry. So once I get to the bottom, I could start immediately painting the top if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to leave that for the next video. But here we are. Now we might try and just fill in a few areas that seem to be lacking, but I'm not going to worry too much about them. Okay. Mm. So here we have our underpainting. I've seen violets up here. I don't see any violet down here. I could add some more if I wanted to. That's the nice thing about an underpainting. If you decided this was too light, you could add some more color to it. But I'm, I'm happy enough with this. It's going to work for me. I'm probably going to have to redraw my rocks, but I've got some really nice color in here I can work with. I've got the basic shape of the rocks. The basic big shapes of the painting are laid out for me. And in doing the color considerations, I took into consideration both the challenges and possibilities, as well as the color palette that I would be ending up with in the painting. And so uh, I've used a number of different colors. Plus, I've tried to use some colors that I think are a little more interesting and vibrant and might add some uh, excitement to this picture. We'll see. Okay. So I finished the first pass of my underpainting, and I'm looking at it, and I kind of like the colors back here. I like the way the bird stands out, and this color's okay. But I've kind of lost some of the dynamic uh, arc of the composition here, and I've lost some of those darks. And so I think I'm just going to go in. I'm going to put some. I'm going to. I'm going to put some violet in here, and I'm going to add some of that down here. This is just so that I have more of a sense. I'm going to put some up here. It's going to be more interesting, I think. I really want that to be of importance, okay? So I'm just going to add some more. You can do that. You don't like your first attempt? You can do that. So let's see what happens now with it on top. 
can see right away, this is much darker. So this is going to give me more to, to work on top of, I think. And I like this. I could go down lightly on over so as to try and marry it with what's already there. But, um, This is much better, much better. I really like this now. I like the combination of the violet with the browns. Um, just a much richer color. I might even throw a little bit into these rocks if I can. Okay. Um, put a little more alcohol down here. I'll just darken it. But now I'm happy with this underpainting. Now I think I've got something that's really going to work for me. So, let's just recap. Um, with this underpainting, we first discussed uh, the challenges and the possibilities of the painting. And this area being all really uh, kind of abstract, we could just sort of whoosh some color in there nicely. This area is a little more complex. So I tried to stick with the lighter and the darker pieces. It's still pretty abstract, and I'm going to have to redraw the rocks, but that's all right. Um, we use this color as something that I thought would be really useful, but I know that there's still this dark up here. And so going back and adding that violet there, I think has given me a much stronger underpainting, something that I can really work with. And all of this is leading up to that little bird. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for the next uh, demo where I will be doing the painting on top of this. Stay well and see you next time. Bye.